The High Counselor was beyond nervous. He had prayed to the seven stars that this day would never come in his lifetime, but here he was, staring out his view screen at the thirteen black ships, bristling with weapons and piloted by the galaxy's nightmare. The Vars. The Vars were notorious. Going from system to system, world to world with their ships, threatening war and total annihilation if they were not appeased. Against them, none could stand. Against them, there could be no victory. The only saving grace for the galaxy at large is that as advanced as they were, the Vast seemed to lack any proficiency in negotiations. With their power, with the strength they had at their command, they could have squeezed much more than they did from the races they terrorized. They often accepted a fraction of what they could have demanded and were none the wiser for it. So that is how the High Counselor was in the position he found himself in now. The Vas had approached the Union of Planets' territory, and the powers that be sent him and the thirteen other representatives of the Union to negotiate with the Vas before they decided to just come in and kill them all. Both of his hearts almost stopped beating in his chest when the viewscreen flickered and switched to show the Vas commander. He did not seem that imposing, green-skinned, and an angular face. He pretty much seemed like every other sapient species, but the eyes, there was something very disconcerting about the vast commander's eyes. They were narrowed with intensity, searching the faces of all on the High Counselor's ship as if looking for something. Shaking, the High Counselor began. Most glorious and powerful vast commander, we welcome you and are honored you graced us with your presence in these negotiations. The vast commander's face did not change, but his eyes did. They were no longer narrowed and intense. You may call me commander, he said, the translator spitting out his words seconds after they had been spoken. Gracious commander, the high counselor said, bowing his head. I appreciate your patience and restraint. As he said this, he heard another Union representative cough slightly, as if in amusement, but he covered it up quickly. The High Counselor glanced over and glared at the newest member of the Union, a race calling themselves humans. He knew very little of them as they had just joined less than a few tenth cycles ago, much too soon to be sent to negotiations as important as this, but Union law stated all Union members must send a representative. Get on with it, the Vas commander barked. To prevent your annihilation, what do you offer the Vas? Smiling wide, the High Counselor once again bowed his head. Greatest of the vast commanders, as the head of the Union, we offer you the third arm of our home system, from the star known as Planus to the planet known as Tro. In all, thousands of mineral-rich asteroids, 35 planetary bodies and their moons, and a rouge planet by the outer spiral. The vast commander sat back in his chair. He seemed to sigh, and his eyes just showed disappointment. And the next representative? He asked, waving a hand at the view screen. So the thirteen other representatives went, in order of their joining the Union, each bowing and offering the vast a section of their domain, giving up planets, untold millions of tons of resources, and even offering ships. And then it was the human's turn. Most noble and majestic commander, the human began, staring at the view screen. The vast commander did not seem to notice the human did not bow to him first, but the high counselor did, and gave a slight hiss of warning. As the newest member of the Union, we are unable to offer you any of our controlled space or any of our resources. The human continued as the high counselor's eyes flew open wide in horror. But what we can offer you, your greatness, the human paused for a second, is a big glass of shut the up. Shocked silence greeted the human as every other ambassador looked at him in sheer abject terror. This stupid human just condemned them all to a horrible death. The vast commander, who had been idly gazing around his bridge as the other ambassador spoke to him, immediately snapped to attention as the translator caught up and repeated what the human had just said. His eyes narrowed once again, searching the faces of the ambassadors on the ship. Who said that? he said, his voice shaking. Who just said that? 
Before the human could even step forward, every hand from every other ambassador pointed at him. The human looked around and shook his head a little with a sneer. The vast commander studied the human on the screen before him, his intense gaze studying every inch. I want to make sure. The vast commander hissed, his hands gripping his chair's armrests tightly. Your intent with your pledge to us. Our translator was unable to translate some of what you said, but it reported that your statement had a tone of... defiance. Is this correct? Did you mean to imply defiance? He said this last part in a dangerous whisper. The High Counselor, shaking with fear, started to say, My most gracious, Commander! But the vast Commander roared, Shut up, worm! and pointed a finger at the human. I want him to speak for himself. The human stepped forward. My apologies, Your Greatness. There appears to be some confusion. The human began. The vast Commander listened intently as the translator repeated what was being said in his own language. His shoulders seemed to slump at its words. I did not mean to imply defiance. I meant there to be no doubt, the human said, his voice raising in anger. I meant for you to understand that in no circumstance ever would we simply bow and scrape to you or give you one damn thing. The High Counselor fell to the floor at the human's words. It was all over. They were all doomed. Perhaps, the human continued. If I told you to go back to where you came from and fornicate with your own mothers, my intent would be more clear. Does this help you understand? Does this make my position on this matter crystal clear, you pompous windbag? Silence. The vast commander listened to the translator, then had it repeat the human's words twice more. When he was done listening, he turned his eyes on the human and got to his feet. Silence. The ambassadors were all cowering, knowing what was about to happen. The vast commander slammed both of his fists on the console in front of him and roared. Finally! The human's eyes widened in surprise. This was certainly not the response he was looking for. Finally! He repeated, a large smile across his face. We have been looking for you. We knew you had to be out here somewhere. The human was confused. Looking for us. You know us. You know nothing about us, he said defiantly. The vast commander laughed, and his laughter was more terrifying than any of his threats could have been. Oh, don't I, he said, still laughing. Let me tell you how much I know about you. I know that you joined this stupid little union recently. The commander began, sitting back in his chair. I know that it did not take you long to realize that you are like a predator among prey, that all these other races... Here he waved his hand dismissively at the other ambassadors. Combined could not challenge you, and you are aware of that fact. The human stiffened a little but remained silent. I know that you realize that there must be more out there, that this cannot be it. This cannot be all that there is. I know that your race challenges each other constantly, that competition and battle are in your blood that your need to test yourselves against others is paramount, or you will stagnate and die. Here, the commander's eyes narrowed. I know that you need to, to have battle and conflict, not just against equals, but against those more powerful. I know that that is what makes you strong, and enables you to overcome any obstacle, and propels you to ever greater heights. And I know this, he said, staring right at the human, because we are the same. There was again a moment of silence before the human replied. He seemed to be picking his words carefully. I thought I knew you as well, but I was mistaken. I think I understand you now. The vast commander smiled. Oh, please tell me about myself. I know that as a race, you got complacent. I know that you felt like you were suffocating, like you could not breathe as you were tied down to those you knew were not your equals. The vast commander was no longer smiling, but he was listening intently. I know that the galaxy thinks you are bullies and that you are stupid. I know they appease you with trifles and garbage, and you let them, not because you are stupid, but because you do not care for such things. I know you push, not to intimidate other races, but to find a race with a backbone, a race that will push back. I know that you have looked the galaxy over and found no one that would stand up to you. 
You are not a bully. You are bored. You fear boredom over everything else. Because if there is no thrill in life, why bother living it? I know you fear to find no one equal to yourselves, and that if you only face those that are weak, you will become weak as well. And I know, the human said, looking right at the vast commander, exactly how you feel. The High Counselor and every other ambassador on the ship sat silent. They did not know what was going to happen anymore. This, this was uncharted territory. My race has a saying, the human said, that when the two biggest guys in the neighborhood meet, they have to fight. The vast commander simply nodded his head, but he seemed almost saddened. But I found that that is not true in every case. The human continued and began pacing in front of the view screen. Sometimes they become the strongest of friends. The vast commander nodded in agreement. I believe this as well, but we are at the edge. He replied. We stand on the edge of a blade. Do we fight? Do we test our metal against each other? Is it fated that this will be so? The human stopped pacing and looked at the commander. In my gut, you do not feel like an enemy. You feel like a brother. The vast commander nodded almost sadly. Long have we searched for you, to test you and ourselves in battle. And now that I've found you, I do not want to continue on that course. I will tell you what. The human said, smiling back at the commander. Why don't you come over? We throw some grub on the grill, throw back a few beers and discuss what we are going to do. The vast commander listened, then said, The translator did not understand half of what you just said, human, but... Here he smiled. It sounds good to me. We will prepare for transport to your vessel. The human smiled. Not this one. We have a battle cruiser out of sight behind the nearest moon. We brought it in case there was an issue. The high counselor looked shocked at this information. The vast commander barked a laugh and pointed at the human. I knew I liked your race for a reason. Oh, and commander, the human said, almost as an afterthought. Since we both thrive on competition, tell me, what do you think of sports? Hello, guys. The story of the High Counselor, who is almost shaking with fright as he faces these powerful vast ships, is gripping. But then the human delegate unexpectedly jumps in and makes the most shocking, stomach-churning play in the middle of the talks. I'm referring to the kind of humor that makes you grin. It's similar to what you would find in a sitcom. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the world to me. So thank you and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.